I'm Sarah Hashimaris in the Los Angeles Times Newsroom. The director of the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention this week sharply criticized doctors for prescribing powerful narcotic drugs to treat patients with chronic aches and pains, overlooking options like physical therapy and exercise. Dr. Tom Frieden said such treatment poses addiction and overdose risks to patients and should be reserved for severe situations like treating cancer pain. A CDC report indicates an astonishing 400 percent increase from 1999 to 2010 in prescription drug overdose deaths among women. That's nearly 48,000 women who died during that time. Dr. Frieden's announcement comes as the U.S. Food and Drug Administration continues to look at new controls for the prescription and promotion of narcotic painkillers. Joining me now are Times staff writers Lisa Garion and Scott Glover, who investigate and report on the use and distribution of prescription drugs as an ongoing series for the Times. Scott and Lisa, thanks for being here. Thank so you. let's start off with this quickly closing gender gap when it comes to prescription narcotic overdose deaths among women. So um, this is something that I think surprised even the CDC researchers. Um, uh, drug deaths has been a problem that has primarily hit men. Um, we see that in our data. More men um, died of overdoses in Southern California. Um, in the period that we looked at than women. But women are quickly closing the gap and the primary driver are um, narcotic painkillers, which um, previous research has shown um, tend to be prescribed more often to women at higher doses and for longer periods of time. And middle-aged women, there's stats the, about them. The, the fastest growing um, group in the United States um, uh, for drug overdoses is middle-aged women, women between the ages of 45 and 54. And they're primarily women um, who, are, who began at least being treated for pain um, with these types of drugs. Now, in terms of prevention in, uh, for doctors to, who sort of dole out these uh, prescription narcotic drugs, which tend to lead to overdose deaths, what has the CDC recommended that they do in these situations to prevent them? Well, I mean, one thing that you need to do is uh, carefully screen patients before you begin treating them with these types of narcotics. And then, uh, you know, in part of that screening process, you're looking for past history of abuse, whether it be alcohol or drugs, something that might indicate an, a tendency to abuse. And then the other thing is to carefully monitor them once you're prescribing the drugs, have them in the office, uh, you know, uh, take uh, urine tests um, to make sure that they're taking the drugs as prescribed, you know, that they don't, uh, you know, not, not taking too many of them, they're not disappearing too quickly, that sort of thing. And, and pain doctors uh, in particular, you know, who treat these patients regularly are expected to, to do these types of things. And when it comes to FDA controls, who, uh, w what's happening with those and who will they impact, drug companies and? Right, so um, the CDC that put out the study yesterday has, um, does not set drug control policy. That's the Food and Drug Administration. And they're looking at a couple of proposals that would um, um, increase r restrictions on narcotic painkillers. One um, would affect hydrocodone, which is commonly sold as Vicodin and it would move it into a, um, a more restrictive drug class, it, um, which would require um, one big impact for consumers and patients would be that they'd have to go see their doctor every month, every time they, they got a prescription, there would be no more refills. The second proposal that they're looking at would affect the whole class of drugs known as opioids, narcotic painkillers like Oxycontin and Vicodin. And that would change the label on the drugs um, uh, one, of, one of the ideas there is to remove um, the label indication for moderate pain and just, just have the label say it's appropriate for severe pain. And that would affect the way drug makers can um, advertise and promote the drugs. Uh, and then it would be ultimate, up to the doctor ultimately to decide whether or not they want to go along with that label indication. If a doctor sees fit, they would still be able to prescribe it for people um, with less than severe pain. And when can we expect a ruling on which one of these two options the FDA may go with? Well, they're considering, I mean, they could, they could uh, approve both of them, um, they could modify both of them, or they could reject both of them, and they're not on any timetable. Uh, one of the proposals has um, been under consideration for almost a year. And about how many people in Southern California could this potentially impact? Oh, look. I mean, untold numbers. I mean, you know, I think that people who are, uh, uh, 
um, you know, in the, uh, the pain lobby, the, the, the groups that talk about the need for painkillers, that sort of thing, talk about, a, I think it's a 100 million pain sufferers in the country. I don't know that there are studies that support that exact number, but um, every time we write a story, you know, talking about these sorts of things, it's, it's almost a guarantee you're going to receive an email from somebody who is fearful of, uh, you know, these drugs being not available to them due to all the heightened scrutiny that's occurring right now. You know, these are people who are presenting themselves as legitimate patients who need these drugs um, just to, you know, get through the day. And they're worried um, that, uh, you know, that's what ha what's happening right now in the legislature in California and, and um, you know, with the FDA could ultimately deny them drugs that they need. All right, well, thank you both for your insights. You can keep up with Scott and Lisa's coverage on LATimes.com and on Twitter, at LATimes.